Amen. Well, are you ready for the word? Yes. All right. Please turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 16. Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 16. I read, it says, Honor your father and your mother as the Lord your God has commanded you that your days may be long and that it may be well with you in the land which the Lord God is giving you. And we are blessed by the reading of his word. Well, I'm starting a new series that I have titled Understanding the Protocol of Honor. Understanding the Protocol of Honor. And this is part one. Understanding the Protocol of Honor. And this is part one. Please understand that every kingdom is guided by kingdom rules and kingdom principles. Every kingdom is guided by kingdom rules and kingdom principles. And that also means that in this kingdom that we are in, in the kingdom of God, there is a protocol that governs the kingdom. In this kingdom, there is a protocol that governs this kingdom. And it's important for us to understand that where there are no protocols or rules or guidelines in any kingdom or in any society or in any family setting, that society ends up in degradation. That's why rules are very important, even in relationship, for any relationship to be successful, both parties have to adhere to some boundaries, to some rules that in this family or in this relationship, these are our founding principles. We don't do this, we don't do that, and so on and so forth. And that causes the relationship to thrive and to be successful. So in Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 16, the Bible tells us, God says, honor your father and your mother as the Lord your God has commanded you. I want you to notice that this is not a suggestion. It is a command. God says, honor your father and your mother as the Lord has commanded you that your days may be long. So that means if you want your days to be long, you have to honor your father and your mother. If you want to live long, if you want your days to be long, you have to honor your mother and your father. And not only that, he said, and that it may be well with you in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. So two things, if you want to live long and you want it to be well with you, then the key to those two is honor. And not just honor, honor your father and your mother. Notice, God never said honor your good father or honor your bad father. He says honor your father. It doesn't matter whether he's good or bad. And also that's not a justification for any father now to use that basis of scripture to begin to abuse their children. Or mother to begin to use their to use to abuse their children. We have to honor our parents because in us honoring them, then God releases long life upon us, and then it is well with us. Please follow me in this series, in this teaching, because it is vital and it will bless you. It will change your life forever. Write this down. Where purpose is not known, abuse is inevitable. Where purpose is not known, abuse is inevitable. And we know who quoted this. This is the late Miles Monroe. He said, where purpose is not known, abuse is inevitable. So that means if you don't understand the purpose and the place of honor, 
then you begin to abuse those that you're supposed to honor. Then you begin to abuse those that you're supposed to honor. And when it comes to the kingdom of God, one key thing that God doesn't play with is the protocol of honor. As a matter of fact, the foundation of the kingdom of God is founded on this thing that I'm teaching you, honor. Now, when God gave the children of Israel and asked the Ten Commandments, there is no commandment with a blessing except this one. Honor your father and your mother that it may be well with you and that you may live long. This is the only commandment with a blessing. Because God wants us to honor our fathers and our mothers. Now, when the Bible says honor your mother and your father, it's not just talking about your biological mother or your biological father. It's talking about anyone who is older than you. Anyone who has a, a place of responsibility in our society or in the world, then it becomes our responsibility to honor them. Amen. Revelation chapter 5 verse 12. The Bible says, saying with a loud voice, where there is a lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor. Notice that. And honor and glory and blessing. Now, out of these seven things, one key element that God wants us to understand is the principle of honor. The principle of honor. He says, the angels are saying with a loud voice, and this is what Jesus died on the cross for. He died and received this. The Bible says, a worthy is a lamb that was slain. When Jesus was slain on the cross, when he died, these are the seven things he received. Number one is power. Number two is riches. Number three is wisdom. Number four is strength. Number five is honor. Number six is glory. And number seven is blessing. But notice that in as much as Jesus could have died for any other thing, he died for one key thing, and that is honor. Glory be to God. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 7. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 7. The Bible says that wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And in all you're getting... Get what? Understanding. What are we talking about? Understanding the protocol of honor. Understanding the protocol of honor. Glory be to God. Understanding the protocol of honor. So if we are going to really understand how honor governs the kingdom of God, then we have to have understanding. So the Bible says that wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. But in addition to wisdom and in all you're getting, get what? Get understanding. The moment you have understanding of honor, you begin to do exploits in life. The results, let's quickly look at the results of lack of honor. Oh, sorry, the results of lack of understanding. We're going to look at the person whose life has no understanding, who doesn't understand honor. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 30 to 32. I want you to follow me carefully because this is so critical that we establish this foundation so that you get it. There is no need to rush through a teaching for you not to understand it. It's important. The moment you have understanding of a particular subject, you become a master of it. So follow me very attentively because this will change your life. Amen. Now we're looking at the results of lack of honor. Proverbs chapter 24 from verse 30 to 32. The Bible says that I went by the field of a lazy man or the field of a slothful man and by the vineyard of a man 
void of understanding or a man devoid of understanding. That means this man lacked understanding. So look at what happens to a man or a woman who has no understanding. Look at what happens to a man or a woman who has no understanding. Verse 31, the Bible says that, And lo, it was all grown, or all overgrown, with thorns, and its surface was covered with nettles. Its stone wall was broken down. So can you see a man of no understanding there? A man of no understanding, their field is overgrown. With what? With thorns. You remember when uh, the curse was released in the Garden of Eden in Genesis chapter 3? It says, thorns and thistles shall the land produce for you. Glory be to God. Amen. Thorns and thistles. So a man who has no understanding, their life is full of curses. Very important. Glory be to God. A man of no understanding, their life is full of what? Curses. It says, I went by a man's field who has no understanding. And look at what I saw. It was all overgrown. It was all overgrown with thorns. Its surface was covered with nettles. Its stone wall was broken down. So that means when you see a man who has no understanding, they have no boundaries. Because its stone wall is broken down. They have no boundaries. They talk anyhow. They abuse those who are honorable in society. They raise their tongue against what they don't understand. They criticize everything. Why? Because a man of no understanding, his vineyard, his field is overgrown with curses. Is full of curses. And because of that, his it is covered with nettles. It is covered with nettles. Are you following what I'm saying? Amen. So it is very, very important to begin to understand that the moment you lack understanding, then what happens? Curses becomes your next door neighbor. That's why you have to be careful who you are following. Amen? Amen. You have to be careful who you are following. This is a man of no understanding or a woman of no understanding. Their wall is broken down. Family walls broken down. Financial walls broken down. Moral wall broken down. They have no wall around their morals. They insult everyone. They have no boundaries. Because this man or this woman is devoid of understanding. Verse 32, the Bible says that, And I saw it, and I considered it well. I looked on it and received instruction. So when you see a man who has no understanding, you can see that their life is full of curses. Their life is full of confusion. Their life is full of disorder. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, they begin to, to, to abuse everyone in society. Be careful what you criticize. It's not everything that you criticize. 
most especially people who have no understanding criticize everything. We are living in a day and age where the church of Jesus Christ is under attack. Men who don't understand spiritual things wake up and say they are teachers of the Bible. And they begin to criticize established authorities in the faith. One thing I have noticed that no one who ever says, I want to bring correction to any field. Anyone who says, I want to bring correction, people are doing this the wrong way. So I've been called to bring correction. You do it in wisdom. You don't do it through insulting people who are already there. Praise God. And for your information, there is no one who knows it all. No one person knows it all. But before you teach me how to drive a car, let me first see if you have a license. <laughs> before you teach me how to drive the car, show me your license. If you don't have a license, you can't teach me how to drive because I have a license, I'm driving. You don't have a license, you don't know how to drive and you want to teach me how to drive. It doesn't work that way. Before you counsel me on how to raise children, show me the children you have raised up. Before you counsel me on how to love my wife, show me how you have loved your own wife. You can't be a confused, broke man and want to teach someone how to prosper. Are you following what I'm saying? So, a man devoid of understanding have their walls broken down. They have no foundation. Everything around them is broken down. They criticize everybody. They think because they know a, one, two, three, they can, they can pull down everything. It doesn't work that way. Before you teach me how to lose weight, show me the weight you have lost. <laughs> Before you teach me how to grow a church, Show me the church that you have started. Glory be to God. That's how it works in this kingdom. If you haven't started a church, you don't have no justification to teach me how to start a church. I remember many years ago when we started the church, there was a pastor who came to the church and said, Pastor, 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 let me come and put fire on the altar. <laughs> and I said to myself within me, I am putting water on the altar. I am putting water. <laughs> you want to come and put fire. I am putting altar, uh, water. So show me the fire you are putting on your own altar. You can't just get up and have a title a pastor, I'm a pastor, I'm a bishop, I'm a founder of this, I'm archbishop, I'm that, and think that you know how to do it. If you haven't started branches, don't teach me how to start branches. <laughs> uh, Moses said to God, these your people, God, they are stiff-necked people. They are stick neck people. You, you, why have you given me this bedding? Before you learn how to lead 10 people, then you can teach someone who has not led anybody how to get, get 10 members. And for your information, having followers on social media platforms is not a sign that you are popular. Are you following what I'm saying? It's very important. Write this down. Anyone who dishonors an honorable person lacks understanding. Anyone who dishonors an honorable person 
lacks understanding. Isaiah chapter 29 from verse 14 to 16. Glory be to God. The Bible says that therefore, behold, I will again do a marvelous work among these people. A marvelous work and a wonder. For the wisdom of their wise men shall perish. Did you see that? For the wisdom, the purported wisdom of their wise men shall perish. And the understanding of their prudent men shall be hidden. So they think they have understanding, but they have no understanding. God is saying that the understanding of their prudent men shall be hidden. It says, Woe to those who seek deep to hide their counsel far from the Lord, and their works are in the dark. They say, Who sees us and who knows us? Key verse, verse 16. It says, Surely you have things turn around. Shall the porter be esteemed as the clay? So you have to understand that there's a place for the porter. And there's a place for the clay. For shall the thing made say of him who made it, he did not make me? Or shall the thin form say of him who formed it, he has no understanding? Do you see the place of understanding? People who pull down men and women of honor in society, in any society, have no understanding. They have no understanding. The scriptures are clear. They have no understanding. If you see anyone, no matter where they are coming from, they start insulting. And I mean, let's not even talk about the church insulting an elderly person, then you know that that child is devoid of understanding. We are living in a generation where children call adults by their first name. <laughs> where we are coming from in our culture, everybody, anyone older than you is an uncle. Anyone older than you is an auntie. That is a sign of respect. We honor the elderly. What are we talking about? Understanding the protocol of honor. Understanding the protocol of honor. My prayer for you today is that you will not become a casualty. For the devil is like a rolling lion seeking whom he may devour. Don't become a casualty. Don't allow the devil to use you to destroy you. Glory be to God. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 4 from verse Jeremiah chapter 4 verse 22. It says, For my people are foolish. They have not known me. They are all silly children, and they have no understanding. They are wise to do evil, but to do good they have no knowledge. Look at that. For my people, Jeremiah 4.22, it says, For my people are foolish. They have not known me. They are all silly children. They have no understanding. They are wise to do evil. But to do good, they have no knowledge. To do good, they have what? No knowledge. I pray for you today that God will give you understanding to be able to honor those who have gone ahead of you. That's why in our house, we don't criticize men of God. Even if I know by discernment and through discernment that a man or a woman of God is fake, I don't criticize them. It is not my place. 
Are you following what I'm saying? It is not my place to criticize any man or any woman. Because, listen, even when Saul, the anointing left Saul, God rejected Saul, and the anointing came upon David, God chose David to replace Saul. And David had an opportunity to kill Saul. He cut off Saul's robe, and the Bible says that David's heart was pricked. Now, notice something. Even though David was now the rightful king, God's hand was upon him. When he cut off a portion of Saul's garment, as a result of that, that cutting of his garment caused battles in his own family for generations yet unborn. His children started fighting among each other, trying to cut off his kingdom. Actually, some tried to dethrone him. There was coup and all kinds of things in his kingdom just because he dishonored a king. Even though he knew God has rejected this king and now he has been anointed king, in the, in, in the midst of all that, God still punished David for it. What am I saying? That if you have not called the man or the woman, it is not your place to criticize them. For in you trying to criticize them, you think you are anointed, you are cutting short your own destiny. Are you following what I'm saying? Proverbs chapter 18 verse 2. The Bible says that a fool has no delight in understanding, but in expressing his own heart. Oh, that's a very serious word. I don't like I don't like using the word F O O O L, but sometimes you have to you have to you have to you have to mention it. He <laughs> said a fool has no delight in understanding. So when you see somebody criticizing a man of God, a woman of God on social media or, or anywhere, the Bible says that they have no what? Understanding. They don't understand what they are doing. And unfortunately, they have followers who also have no understanding. And they follow them blindly. And all the destinies of these people are shattered. A fool has no delight in understanding. They have no delight. What is a delight? How many of you have eaten Turkish delight before? You love Turkish delight? You love cookies delight? The Bible says a fool has no delight in understanding. A delight is something that is delightsome, something that is sweet, something that is nice. A fool has no delight in understanding. But look at what he does. He but in expressing his own heart. He said, This is how I feel. This is what is in my heart. I don't care what somebody says. They just get one scripture out of context and they use it to criticize men and women of God. If you are part of the camp of people who criticize men of God, caution. For you are cutting short your own life and your own destiny. Write this down. Anyone or any culture or any society or any nation that does not honor descends into degradation. Anyone, any culture, any society or any nation that does not honor descends into degradation. I'm teaching uh, we live in the United Kingdom and uh, here in the UK when they took away parents, disciplined their children it led to degradation there are many houses where children have become vagabonds no honor they hit their parents they throw things at their parents if their parents try to discipline them they'll say I'll call the police. 
children go to school, they can be disciplined by their teachers. When we were going to school, what? When you misbehave at home, your mother will take you to the teacher and they'll take you to assembly and you'll be whacked publicly in assembly in front of everybody. So anyone, any culture, any society, any nation that does not honor descends into degradation, goes down. May it not be so in your life. Leviticus chapter 19 verse 32. Leviticus chapter 19 verse 32. It says, you shall rise before the gray headed. You shall rise before the gray headed and honor the presence of of an old man and fear your God. I am the Lord. This is a saying of God. You say, oh, it is Leviticus. Well, when we stand before God, you tell God it is Old Testament. It is Leviticus. <laughs> and I know many of you don't read Leviticus. That's why I'm reading it for you. God says, you shall rise before the gray headed and honor the presence of an old man. And fear your God. Why? Because I'm the Lord your God. I mean, I've seen in many instances, sometimes you go on the train, there's a little boy sitting down, cross his leg, an old man is on the train, very tired. They won't give the old man a place to sit. Or a pregnant woman standing on the train. The Bible says that you shall rise before the gray-headed. So whenever you see a gray-headed person, someone older than you, you honor them. Honor the presence of an old man. We don't speak anyhow in the presence of an old man. We honor the presence of an old man. We honor the presence of an old man. When you see an old man around, you greet them. In this country, people will look at you, they will say hello. They look at you, they don't greet. Children see you and they don't greet. One of the key things we started teaching our children, when they wake up in the morning and you come, you see us, you have to say, good morning. Good morning, daddy. Good morning, mommy. Doesn't matter we're in the same house. Even my wife, my wife, when she wakes up, first thing, good morning, honey. We're sleeping on the same bed. Somebody will say, oh, but it's not necessary. When she wakes up, first thing, good morning, honey. Because you shall honor the presence of an old man. Now, I'm not an old man. I'm not saying I'm an old man. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm a young man. Glory be to God. Strong with vitality. Amen. But the scriptures are clear. We teach our children how to honor. When an elderly person comes to the house, hello, hello, good afternoon, uncle, good afternoon, auntie. You don't call people by their first name. I saw a clip, a short clip about a young girl who called his dad by his first name. Hello, Joe. Their father looked at her. It's like the ground should open and swallow her up. She wanted to see her father's, her father's um, reaction. You don't call your father by, by his first name. His daddy. His daddy is mommy. It's strange to call your father by name. It's strange. The only time, that's why in most cases, many children in those days, in where we grew up from, when they get, get lost, they don't know the names of their fathers. They say, what's the name of your father? <laughs> Daddy. What's the name of your mom, mother? Mommy. Because we've been trained to honor our parents. Are you following what I'm saying? So God says you shall rise before the gray-headed and honor the presence of an old man and fear your God. I am the Lord. Amen. Finally, as we close, honor is a protocol that governs the kingdom of God. Honor is a protocol 
that governs the kingdom of God. First Samuel chapter 2 verse 30. We'll go a bit deeper on this scripture from next week. First Samuel chapter 2 verse 30. It says, Wherefore the Lord God of Israel said, I said indeed that thy house and the house of thy father shall work before me forever. But now the Lord saith, Be it far from me. For them that honor me, I will honor. And they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. So you see, God is concerned about honor. God is concerned about honor. It's time for us to go back to honor. And for your information, the anointing that you don't honor cannot bless you. That's why honor is so important. I want to encourage you today to go back to the protocol of honor, to the foundation of honor. And when you do that, God will bless you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. and amen. Well, if you're watching, wherever you're watching from, and you haven't given your life to Christ, you're not born again. If you die today, you don't know whether you'll make it to heaven. I'd like to pray for you. I'd like to pray for you. Say with me, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I, come I come to you just as I am. Forgive me of my sins. Write my name in your book of life. May I serve you all the days of my life. From today, I have decided to follow you and no turning back, no turning back in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, thank you for these precious ones that have given their lives to you now. I pray for them that they'll be established in the faith. Help them to grow in grace and in love. Holy Spirit, seal them unto salvation. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. If you pray that prayer,